Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Pack one, pick one. Our rare's decent. Redan, both halves are quite solid. Can punish the snow decks as well. At Uncommon. Arcanist, not a card I recommend necessarily first picking, since not every deck can necessarily leverage it to its full potential. Even if you are a giant deck, you do need enough of the same instant or sorcery to get back. And then the heist is eh, okay, but not particularly exciting as a first pick. I do like Ruined Crown quite a bit if you can get your hands on at least two runes to go with it. And then any good commons that stand out. Raise the Draugr can be okay. Potential 2 for 1 in the late game. We've got some nice snow lands, especially Veil vale as mana fixing. I think we'll just take the rare. Don't have to make it too complicated here. Although there's an argument for like a snow land or a crown to keep us more open. Second pick. Well, could potentially move into blue white with Vega the Watcher, which would potentially complement Raidan. Gotta feed the serpent as one of the better removal spells in the set at common. So that's definitely a consideration and also keeps us a little bit more flexible because we're not committing to blue-white specifically. We could potentially pivot out of white and be black plus something else. The rare is missing so that doesn't tell us too much about this pack. Squash is okay if we end up in giants but maybe not the best with our first pick Raidan. And then there's a blue-white snow land too. So for me it's probably between Vega and Feed the Serpent. Feed the Serpent is maybe a tiny bit more flexible uh, than Vega, although the upside on Vega is potentially higher. You know what, let's take Vega. I haven't drafted a dedicated blue-white Fortel deck yet, so maybe we can make that work. This pack is pretty disappointing. There's nothing in blue or white that I want. There's some good cards overall though. The Glade Warden in green, there's Doomscar Titan for red, and then some snow related cards with Sculpture of Winter and Snow Covered Forest. Glade Warden is potentially a bit more splashable than uh, Sculptor and Snowland, of course, that commits us to the snow archetype more, whereas we're not necessarily a snow deck. So I kind of like the Glade Warden here just as a fine individual card instead of speculating on snow but yeah could see an argument for these two as well fourth pick well that's a pretty straightforward behold synergizes with vega just a powerful card by itself anything else that jumps out we've got a banned snow land which i guess would be okay if we do end up in three colors but um uh, yeah, still taking Behold. The Parter Realm could also be okay as another Fortel instant here, but I'll take this one. Alright, big fan of Mistwalker in general. There's no real Fortel synergy in this pack, so we'll just take the card that's individually powerful. It's also Flyer if we want to end up with a bit of a blue-white Flyer sub-theme here even if there's no real payoff cards. So Mistwalker it is. And then... I've got a few options. Don't know if this is going to be the best Battlefield Raptor deck. This is better in more low-curve decks where we're planning to play a bunch of auras and equipment. That's not necessarily where I see this deck going. Story Seekers just a fine two-drop in any white deck. And then there's the Kin Seekers, which would be Nice alongside Mistwalker, another shapeshifter. Makes it easier to get to the three creature types we need. But uh, I think I'm taking the Story Seeker just to have a good two drop here. And then not opposed to Glimpse the Cosmos, which we might not have a ton of giants, but still works nicely with our changelings to get some extra value. There's also Goldmaw Champion as just a nice 3-drop for a more aggressive deck. 
although it might not be at its best in a blue-white flyer stack where most of our creatures have evasion anyway. There's also Harbinger, which could be decent if we end up with more expensive foretell cards. So that's definitely a consideration too. But I kind of like Glimpse as it is pretty likely to get us a nice 2 for 1. I'm not a huge fan of Raven Form, but it could be okay as a one-off. Alternatively, we could take Divine Gambit. So these are like the two controversial removal spells of the set, both in the same pack. So the way I see Gambit is basically a cheap removal spell that we can only cast after a certain number of turns in the game has passed. Um, makes it easier to double spell. Raven Form is just not great, giving the opponent a 1-1 one -one flyer is irrelevant. But it does have synergy with a few of our cards here, so might still be the pick. And not much here that I want out of our initial pack. I don't think we're necessarily a Warhorn Blast the deck, even though it has Fortel. Strategic planning is also not particularly synergistic here. So could take a Warhorn Blast, could maybe speculate on Heist in case we end up splashing black somehow and want to play that card too. Doesn't seem like a great Razor Draugr deck so far. Probably doesn't matter too much. And then blue-green seems open. I guess we'll speculate on Moritz. Didn't think we need Run Ashore or Invader. Those are both kind of medium. And nothing here that I want. So... We're definitely more committed to blue than white, and getting the Parter Realm this late is nice. There's also Scorn FAG, which would also go well with Vega, but I like having access to at least one Departure Realm in a deck like this, so that seems perfect. Or we could take the Tree Line in case we want to splash green, so that's also a consideration, but I think a focused blue-white deck might be the way to go here. Guess we already have a Valor in the sideboard. All right, so, ooh, last big champion, that's a gift. Might end up playing it. Second pack, well, there's a lot of options. Our rare could be good if we end up with a rune, although we don't have one yet. There's the giant's amulet, which is just a great card by itself, and even if the 4-4 giant is answered, we're still left with a nice equipment. Or there's augury raven, which is a foretell card, so it synergizes with our Vega and also just a good card by itself. It's a flyer, so helps our flyer plan of beating down in the air. So if we already had a rune, I would probably take Champion. Given that we don't, I'm kind of leaning Raven over Giant's Amulet just because of the type of deck we're drafting. And then yeah, I mean, hopefully we wheel something out of this pack. Probably not going to wheel Amulet or Champion, but maybe like a Snow-Covered Plains could come in handy. And then I'm just going to take another Mistwalker, I think. Another blue-green dual land in case we wanted to splash green, but so far it doesn't seem necessary. So I'll just take my Changeling here. All right, there's a Fortel counter spell, but there's also the Fortel removal spell. And Iron Verdict seems perfect for a blue-white flyers deck, since we're going to be kind of racing with our flying creatures, the opponent can block, the attack is back with large ground creatures, and then Iron Verdict is potentially a one-mana removal spell if we manage to foretell it earlier. So it seems a bit more synergistic with our game plan than the counter spell here. And then, yeah, we can maybe wheel like a Harbinger in case we end up with more expensive foretell cards. Now here, could take Usher as just a fine one drop. Not particularly synergistic, but it does give us an early board presence. There's Corsair. Don't have a ton of artifacts or enchantments at the moment. In fact, we don't have any. So it's just a three mana 2-2 flyer. This Daneful Stroke could be fine, or we could speculate on a Snow Land, although at the moment it doesn't appear like we have any Snow Synergy. So, 
I might take the one drop just to give us something cheap to play. We don't have many two mana creatures either, although we will be foretelling a decent amount of the time. So I'll take Usher, hope to wield this Daneful Stroke maybe. Alright, Kinseeker seems decent. We've got double Mistwalker and uh, did we have any other changelings? I guess those are the changelings so far, but we do have a couple birds too, Augury, Raven, Vega. So if we have two of those uh, plus Kinseeker or one of those, a Mistwalker and a Kinseeker, so we can get to counter and then it's a pretty nice blocker on the ground while we chip in with our flyers. So it seems totally reasonable. Um, not too thrilled about Pilfering Hawk, even if we had Snowlands to activate it, which we don't. So I guess I'll just take an island here, not too interested in Wings of the Cosmos. And then a Scorn Effigy could be okay if we have more Fortel Synergy going on. Seems better than anything else. Alright. Got a pretty late Bind the Monster, another Raven form. These are both removal spells that I usually only want one copy of. And since we already have Raven form, I probably take Bind here. Don't have too much synergy with Arcanist at the moment. And Mirror Lake is going to be difficult to activate in blue white. So Bind it is. And nothing here really. Can take a Blast or a Longboat, but I doubt we'll play any of those. So, what else do we need? Maybe some more 2-drops. Could use some more removal. So far we have some somewhat conditional removal spells. Don't think I need Revitalize, but I guess it's the only thing we can potentially play. Alright, I'll take my Harbinger. And a Stainful Stroke wield, so that's nice. Alright, so last pack. Let's see what we can get. Waking the Trolls is a rare. Well, I don't really want a second Raven form or second Bind the Monster too badly. So it's like, take an Usher of the Fallen, which, you know, would be okay. Or I can Rare Draft. Next up, I wouldn't mind another Depart, I guess, as another Foretell instance. Icebreaker Kraken is just impossible to cast, even in the Snow Decks. I have yet to see that one in play. There's another Glimpse. Glimpse would be good too. We have double Mistwalker and Kinseekers as Changelings, so those count as Giants. So second Glimpse versus second Departure Realm, pretty much. Mm, I guess we'll go with Glimpse. And then we might wheel Depart or second Bind and maybe play those. I don't hate Giant Ox in this deck, just as a cheap blocker that can hold off. Most ground attackers seems better than 3 mana 2 2 flyer or 3 mana 3 2 with a somewhat marginal ability when we have this many 3 drops already. Ooh, nice Rune of Flight seems nice. Ooh, although there's also Gates of Istfel. That's one it's going to be hard to pass up. And a Bounding Gold. Jeez, this pack is stacked. Wish I could take this entire pack and just call it a day. I mean, Gates is just an amazing upgrade in our mana base. And it's not too expensive to activate. Bound is an excellent removal spell, which we could definitely use. Is there a chance we wheel Gates? It's not impossible if we're the only blue-eyed drafters, but it's unlikely. I'll take the Bound and Gold. Another Mistwalker. Sure. Alright, more glimpses. 
Don't mind if I do. All right, I got my gates anyway. Seems like the pick now over Story Seeker, which would still be okay, just as an early lifelinking blocker. And then eighth pick can take second apart or shield mate. The part isn't bad when we have triple glimpse because we're gonna generate some relatively cheap card advantage. So then having a cheap bounce spell to go with it and get back some tempo in the game could be fine. Although I'm pretty light on two mana creatures, so shield mate does have some merits. I'll take the bounce spell. And then now I'll take bind. And I guess we'll play two of those. All right, got another depart and bind anyway. So I guess in hindsight, I would have been happier with a two mana two one and then picked up a depart here. Didn't think we were gonna play triple bind. And then nothing here that I really want. So I didn't end up with as many foretell cards as I maybe would have liked. But it's not like we have a ton of payoff cards for foretelling either, just Vega. And yeah, we wield, wow, Rune, Story Seeker, and Gates. How good is Rune when most of my creatures already fly? I just take a second Gates. I think I do. The life gain on Gates and on Story Seeker is also a way to offset Bind a Monster, so those are both potential uh, reasons to take them. Another stroke. Yeah, so we're clearly the only ones in blue-white. Uh, don't really have a reason to want a snow land. But I guess there's not a huge downside to having it. Is there any situation in which the snow lands could come in handy? Eh, you never know, maybe the opponent has a land destruction spell and they prioritize killing the snow land instead of the gates for some reason. Alright, so need to make a couple of cuts. 17 lands is okay, given that we have double gates as mana sink. So where does that leave us? Scorn Effigy, Harbinger, maybe one bind a monster are cards I could see cutting. Everything else seems reasonable. Maybe Goldmaw Champion is kind of out of place when our other cards fly. I don't mind Ox as an early blocker. I like Triple Glimpse with Triple Mistwalker and Kinseekers just to give us some card advantage. Disdainful Stroke, I guess we could shave one. Two is maybe a bit much when we don't have much else at instant speed. It's okay with the part of realm, I guess. Yeah, can cut one stroke. Seems fine. Take a look at our mana distribution. Do have more blue than white, and we also potentially want to cast double glimpse in the same turn, which will require two blue mana. And Mistwalker also requires blue mana to be activated. So probably want to skew in favor of blue here. Let's see, we've got eight white, nine blue. Also need double blue for gates. Do I go 10, 7 here? I think I do. Don't have a ton of untapped lands for turn 1. Usher, I guess, is the downside. But still playing it on turn 2 is fine. And this is fine. Change wing. <laughs> Alright, that's a good one. Alrighty. Well, this hand has a distinct lack of flying creatures, but we do have Behold, which can help us find more. So I don't hate it. Opponent on blue-red. It's gonna glimpse.
We are stuck on single blue mana. So that is a reason, instead of foretelling here, to just cast Glimpse and look for either a flying creature or an extra island. Alright, so... Playing Ox doesn't really do much. So I could Behold or I could pass and then keep up Disdainful Stroke and maybe Behold. Yeah, that seems better. Walker. Sure. Don't mind binds. And then we want Story Seeker. It's not the worst. Can trade off for the the three two here. Alright, so we can bind Mistwalker. Play Seeker, pass. It does still keep a changeling in play, which does have some consequences. But only taking one damage to keep a flyer tap down feels pretty nice. Uh oh, reflections. Would have been a nice Disdainful Stroke target. Is this on casts? Yeah, when you cast. So, keeping of Stroke now doesn't feel great. I guess we can bounce the Reflections and then keep up Stroke. Sure. So, time to start digging for some win conditions. Oh, those are lands. Guess I'll take the land that does something. Playing the ox can maybe prevent some damage, but it's the ability we care about most and doesn't really prevent it. So we probably glimpse again. And then... Yeah, Raven seems fine. Alright. If we find a Changeling, we can play double Glimpse out of the graveyard, which will be pretty nice. Opponent hits Snowland. I guess they maybe made the mistake of playing land before boasting. So Craven Hulk, reasonable target for bounding gold, but we can also just block it with the ox. So for now we'll just play ox and then play Raven. They might have their own disdainful stroke here.
so we're more or less at parity. Opponent maybe has a small card advantage, but it's not huge. Plus we have gates at some points, and as soon as we find a changeling, we can pull ahead. Alright, Crash the Week deals with Ox. That's fine. And Arcanist, let's see if they have another. Alright, second Crush the Week. Don't have too many creatures that die to those, so that's fine. So we can double Glimpse. It's only a 2 4, but I can take a hit from the Hulk. Mistwalker versus another Gates. Probably the Mistwalker. And then probably hold Glimpse and just foretell to be more mana efficient. And now even if the Kin Seekers dies, if they like attack I block and then they crush again. I can still have another changeling for glimpse. They stayed back. Alright. So our opponents on empty. We can answer pretty much their entire board. And now we have to take a look at Protector Shield to see if it's worth it. I think the two three flyers probably gonna be better for us. I guess we want to bind Hulk, 3, 4 mana, and then probably Mistwalker Glimpse instead of Redan. So I guess we'll start with Mistwalker Glimpse. This is a sorcery. Ooh, Departure Realm can bounce my own Augury Raven. Seems decent. Probably better than another Mistwalker since they aren't necessarily the best in multiples since we only have so much mana to sink into them. And then now, would I rather just keep up the part or do I still bound in gold the Craven Hulk? I could double block Hulk and then activate, but then Crush the Weak could be bad for me, so I think we just bind and call it a day. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind trading Kin Seekers for Crush here. Not too upset. I could have double blocked to kill the Arcanist, but then they would have just killed the Mistwalker instead, which seemed worse. So, can play Redan, and then we'll probably just, let's see, two mana. Don't quite have the mana to bounce Raven and replay it, but I could foretell it, which is probably still worth it. And then Mistwalker can stay on defense. Could also attack for two with Mistwalker. Nah, let's foretell. And then we'll just chill. So we've got air superiority. If the opponent plays a big flyer or a big ground creature, we still have a raven form. And gates will be a nice mana sink once we're done casting spells. All right, sure. More glimpses. A 
Vega. All right. We're going off now. No real reason to bind anything. So we've got two removal spells, plenty of flyers. Alright, amulets is somewhat annoying. We'll have to probably take a hit from the giants. I guess we'll sacrifice gates. 13 cards remaining. Verdict is nice, so is Mistwalker. I guess Iron Verdict lets me kill the Giants if they attack with it. It's not very subtle, but... And then how much do we attack with? Three... Eight... I don't have to attack with everyone, but on the other hand, six, seven... What's the worst case scenario? They play like Calamity Bearer to double the damage output of their Giants. But even then I'm not dead and we have an Iron Verdict, so... Seems fine. Fair points, I guess my opponent could have had uh, 4 damage to non-giants. The verdict is... your giant is dead. Uh, yep, yeah, seems good. So turn 2, Fortal, turn 3, Vega, turn 4, draw an extra card. Or we can wait to play Vega until we can maybe get value right away. Depends on what kind of deck or opponent's playing, maybe. This does have reach. So one thing I could do is like next turn Mistwalker, turn four Vega. Or no, I guess it doesn't quite work. If I had Glimpse in the graveyard already, I could go turn three Mistwalker, turn four Vega, and then Glimpse for one. In order to get immediate value of Vega. Opponent is almost empty handed though. Sentinel and Sarulf. So, they are red, so they could easily have a burn spell for Vega. I mean, I kind of want to just tap out for Vega, but it doesn't block particularly well. So what if we do play Mistwalker next turn? I can glimpse, maybe foretell. Yeah. And then we might have a turn where we play Vega and play a card out of Exile right away. And in the meantime, if they kill the Mistwalker, that's fine. They can move the pick. Hit me for four. All right. So what I kind of want to do is glimpse and then foretell the part. And then next turn I could go Vega, 
play one mana glimpse, draw an extra card, play one mana depart, draw an extra card. That's kind of a big game. Well, that does mean I take quite a bit of damage here. I think it's worth it. Bind. I guess Bind is a little awkward versus Sarul's ability. So probably prefer another Mistwalker or Bound. I'll take a Bound. Alright. So we'll take like 4 or 5 damage here hopefully. And then next turn we get to go off. Alright, more reach. The bow is going to be annoying. Yeah, the Bounding Gold is not going to stop Seraph's ability because it's not an activated ability. So we need blue mana untapped. I mean, Glimpse is nice, although we might need the blocker here. It feels like we're gonna draw enough cards already. And then no reason to bounce now, since this is an instance. Alright, I mean, we'll see. If we can survive this turn, we should be able to turn the corner. That's a big one. So that's probably your bounding gold target. They might be doing me a favor here, because now bouncing the token is a little bit more appealing. I mean, I can just block it too. I can just bounce a giant. Next turn I can still bound in gold, play raven and keep up the part, so I can still keep it up for an extra turn. So, this can trade block here, bound seeker, or I can just take four. Could also just eat a 2 3 and then block Sarulf and not lose anything. Although I kind of like getting rid of Sarulf because it could be a long term issue. Yeah, this seems fine. Now they let them search first. If they don't get a forest, then they can't even replace Seeker if I bounce it. Ah, they got a forest anyway. That's fine, they can replay their Seeker. Oh, they might have already played lands. 
in which case they can't play Seeker. All right, that worked out. So can play Kin Seekers. Keeping up this Daneful Stroke from now on seems prudent, so we can go Kin Seekers, Usher, keep up Stroke. And then we still have our gates as a mana sink. So the bow is definitely gonna be the most annoying card from now on. But we should be able to manage. Alright, this hits artifacts too, so I can target the Elven Bow. Mm, I guess I want to wait a turn to get my extra card from Vega. And then I could play Mistwalker, keep up Stroke, or I could end of turn Gates. End of Drone Gates is a bit more mana efficient, so I think I'm gonna go with that. It's probably worth countering. There goes my mana efficiency. I'll be mana efficient. Now I don't feel too bad. So let's Raven form the bow. See what we draw. So Vega Mistwalker can attack. Could also attack with Usher, to be fair. Don't mind trading it and getting a token. Although it's also doing a reasonable job on defense. And then... I guess I can pump once. Don't mind my position. Still have a Gates we can sacrifice, although I'm probably going to be using mana to pump Mistwalker now. Let's see if our opponent attacks here. We're very close to killing them. Because I can tap one blocker and then pump Mistwalker a few times. Are they actually dead? So let's say I attack with everyone. Champion. Taps down Horizon Seeker. Then this can block a two-powered guy. They take five, six, seven. Eleven total, so not quite. So I guess we'll play it a little safe. Um, maybe sacrifice gate, see what we draw first. Right, it's not bad. So, I mean, I don't mind trading this for the 1-1 one -one and making a token, then foretell. This could also attack. This one probably wants to stay back. Something like this. Is that too aggressive? Five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, so it's not lethal if they take it. This might be overly aggressive. But we get a 1-1 on defense too. Yeah, let's do this. And then by foretelling we get an extra card from Vega next turn. If they somehow had a disenchant for the Bounding Gold, we could have been in trouble, but I think we're okay now. Alright, so they should be dead here. Sweet. All right, fine hand. Uh oh, is it another five color monstrosity? Although I'm seeing Vega, Mistwalker, and Glimpse, I'm getting kind of excited. Um, do I just take the land? Let's take the land. It's a little awkward because I do want to kind of curve out 3 and 4. Maybe not. I guess we want to play Vega before we replay Glimpse. Thanks for the land. I think the Thought Thief, at least in the early game, should be targeting yourself, because you don't know if the opponent needs lands or not. Whereas you know whether or not you need lands. So next turn, Mistwalker, tap land. Next turn, maybe Vega, Glimpse, Bind. Alright, Rune of Flight is pretty annoying. So we would love to find our raven form at some point. Bounding gold can also enchant the equipment. So I kind of like that idea. Sadly, they had enough mana to re-equip. So I need to get rid of the equipped creature first and then bounding all the equipment. I guess I could keep up Disdainful Stroke. Hmm. Probably take it now. Or I could foretell this, keep up stroke pass, and then behold in the opponent's turn, it's probably better. And then hopefully find a bounce spell for the Yeti. And then bounding gold the helm.
Take four. Uh, sure. It's not necessarily a must counter, since I can block it with Mistwalker, but seemed good enough. I'll keep glimpsing. Is that better than Behold? This digs three cards, this four. I guess we should Behold. Right, there's a Raven form and there's the part, so I'll take those. I probably can take the land now too. So how do we do this? Um, I don't have the mana to bounce Yeti now and then bound the helm. So I guess we foretell the part. Can cast it in the opponent's turn, although they will still have the mana to replay and re-equip. Or I can just Raven form the helm now. Although Yeti is still a must answer card. So I guess I just bound in gold the Yeti. And then we have answers for the helm later. Sure. Right, they're gonna bounce their own Yeti. Replay. Reequip. So that was a little bit annoying. So Yeti is a long term problem. So I guess for now I could just Raven form the Yeti. I could double foretell, wait for them to make it unblockable, and then bounce it in their turn. Although if I Raven form, I can start attacking. And the Raven, I can also bounce with the part. Problem is, if they find more creatures, I'll have used Raven form and Bounding Golds. So those are two answers to the helm. Interesting spot. Probably want to get on the board with Kinseeker. Yeah, let's just bounce it now. So if I were to Raven form the Yeti, I guess Iron Verdict would be a nice one to draw towards. All right, I mean, I can keep doing this, just play a tempo game. Get champion in play and then probably pump. Let's see here. If I Raven form, draw cards, glimpse, draw and take a look at the three, so I can take bind and leave them with a Raven token and a bound creature. So let's glimpse. So 
So Raven form doesn't really matter, I guess the helm. I guess it does matter. I guess a Yeti. Because we can get rid of one blocker with the gold mod champion. And Binds gets rid of the other one. Yeah, Vega has done a lot of work in this deck since we have Triple Glimpse, which also triggers off Vega. So our deck lost to a pretty powerful five color snow deck. And then yeah, to a deck that I wouldn't necessarily describe as powerful, but their draw lined up quite well against ours. So yeah, blue white flyers, not a bad archetype in call time limited. If you can get some of those changeling synergies going, if you get a nice density of flying creatures plus some relatively cheap interaction. In search of greatness. Now, I don't think this is particularly great for limited, and I have yet to see it in constructed, so the verdict is still out. But uh, yeah, some other decent cards. Squash kind of jumps out as one of the more exciting ones if you can end up in some sort of giant or changeling deck. Ooh, Halvar, God of Battle. Now this card's great, especially the sword half is probably more exciting and limited. All right, pathways are always good for constructed. Probably just a demon bolt pack one, pick one. A rise of the Dreadmar. Haven't seen that do too much so far, but it is a rare. And there are quite a few sweepers in the set, so this could potentially uh, be a nice counter to those. But yeah, I don't think it's particularly exciting. Would probably prefer Feed the Serpent or Struggle between the two. Not actually sure which is better. They're both kind of the premium removal spell in their respective color. Exiling is somewhat relevant since there is a bit of graveyard recursion. Uh, but Fortel is just an incredibly powerful mechanic, and uh, only being one mana to get the fight effect going means you can potentially play creature and fight in the same turn, which is not something you often get to do with Hunt Week style cards. Ooh, Dream Devourer. Another interesting card. Might have some constructed potential as well. Pack one, pick one. Icebind Pillar, potential payoff for the snow deck. Squash, always decent, and then a couple snow lands, which especially green and blue snow lands are among the more prized possessions, so these are both potentially gonna fit that description. Ooh, Toski Bear of Secrets is awesome, especially if you can combine it with maybe some blue flying creatures. So in blue-green changelings this might be at its best, but uh, also plays well with fight spells since it's indestructible, although it's kind of small to begin with. Plays well with other pump spells, maybe some tokens. And then Binding of the Old Gods, one of the more impressive uncommons in the set. So that's also a very high pick, although it is multicolor. So despite the existence of some of those multicolor snow decks, it does still commit you to a more specific color pair as opposed to Toski, which you can play in any green deck. Yeah, Toski could also be great in an Elves deck where you make a bunch of tokens, so it does have a lot of different homes, which is nice for a rare. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.